Again, first of all, I thank APOC invited me to give a speech. And actually, uh, I've been doing the screening uh, about uh, 20 and 20, 25 years. So today, uh, I think I want to share my experience to uh, using uh, uh, community-based integrated screening program uh, to uh, do some extra epidemiology research and using uh, screening as a platform. So my topic is not only for uh, to the cancer, but it just uh, give a novel thought about how to extend, you know, these uh, opportunities. And and my when I when I uh, conduct these uh, the, the service and the research, I have a dream from the the goal to reach a the enter enterprise uh, from the novel thought through the evidence-based medicine and also a circulated to website for education and trying to do some very ambitious uh, enterprise. Uh, and uh, from beginning, I thought I, I couldn't do that. But uh, 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 after uh, 20 years, uh, 15 to 20 years, I thought maybe uh, it's possible but uh, I share experience with you right now. And community-based integrated screening have several advantages actually, because they can provide the chance of doing uh, evidence-based medicine and epidemiology research. And because they have multiple disease and multiple, uh, you can use questionnaire, different uh, screening tests, uh, different measurement uh, mod, uh, the, the tour. So you can have a multi-state outcome and multi-state course and also multidisciplinary research corporations. And also, uh, you can also develop a very novel methodology and uh, uh, deny. And important, uh, show you later on about, uh, if you have, uh, have a bio sample or you have a, a, a DNA sample, you can also do some uh, personalized medicine, which is very useful right now for the treatment or, or, or also surveillance. And of course, this is uh, very useful for supporting health policy uh, in our government. Although government uh, cannot take adopt all, all of them, but uh, you can uh, you can provide the reference. And of course, the stream part is very important because you can use these data to build up population-based uh, information and also uh, build up the uh, serum bank sem uh, the serum bank samples in the future. Uh, to provide uh, very good information. And also you can have a very good uh, the international cooperation uh, here. And this is uh, the, the paper published in the Cancer to report our preliminary result about multiple screening uh, from Kilong uh, based on about 40,000 uh, subjects uh, from the beginning. And the uh, important thing is uh, this uh, program not only include cancers. Uh, we have uh, evidence-based breast cancer, uh, cervical cancer, and colorectal cancer. But for the liver cancer and oral cancer, is uh, in this program when at that time it's in the uh, experimental stage. And we also consider the chronic disease because the uh, because the local government think about a, a maybe we have to add up the health checkup. Uh, item. Uh, so we, in, we cover the chronic disease. From beginning, we think it's, it's very stupid, but uh, uh, after that, we find this provides opportunity, the linkage between uh, cancer and the chronic disease. So, you see, this is a very interesting uh, uh, the program. And uh, in addition to the benefit from the screening, you can see uh, we just evaluate the, ten, the 20 years, uh, years follow-up you can see this is a all cause of mortality. The screening actually, after uh, <coughs> evaluation, you can see the bring down the 30% uh, mortality reductions for all cause of the days. And now, because of the uh, communal based integrated screening, uh, so it is very easy to do, to integrate some individualized uh, the randomized control trial for some specific side cancers. For example, oral cancers, at that time, they argue with uh, whether we can use the toluidine blue, which is one of the tests for detecting the 
uh, for, for confirmation of the cancers. So we just do a randomized control trial, you know, to random assignment, two arm, one is a dentist, and one is a dental inspection, another one using the total in blue, you know, to, uh, to find out the uh, oral pre-malignancy and the cancers. And we, 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 we did it in a community outreach uh, service. And this is, uh, this is uh, the on-site, you know, uh, random, random assignment uh, for blind uh, assessment. And we published in the Den uh, Journal of Dental Research and to demonstrate for overall, uh, they, they, uh, they are looking of the difference between uh, study group and control group. But they are very useful for, for high detection rate for the, the oral submucosa fibrosis, which is very related to the uh, beta quit chewing, you know. And this is very interesting. And also, uh, we uh, have a chance of doing some uh, randomized control trial for comparing the mammography plus mammography plus uh, ultrasound. And ultrasound, I mean, it's very useful uh, in in our uh, uh, in in our in 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 China and in Taiwan, uh, uh, the physician is uh, very fond of the ultrasound. So we use a randomized control trial uh, to demonstrate and. Uh, we randomize a three group. One is a physical examination, and one is close over for mama mammography ultrasound, ultrasound mammography. And we just come out to the recent result after about uh, six years follow up. So you can see, compare with the physical examinations, uh, the ultrasound combined a mammography uh, can get a twenty percent reduction in the. Uh, advanced uh, breast cancers, uh, stage two plus, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, ultrasound can also provide additional thirty uh, percent advantage to supplement which cannot be detected uh, by a mammography. And this is, we are going to publish this very soon, you know. And the next thing I want to give you one example is not only for uh, screening data. Because at the beginning, this project, not only based on the individual invitations, but based on the family-based invitations. So we invited, we, invite, we invited the subject by a whole family. So we can construct the, homely, uh, the whole family structures. And, and uh, because the information system had already built up into the computer system when people register in the outreach service. You can see uh, the community service uh, 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 the pictures. So before invitations, of course, we use the cancer registry, mortality registry, pap smear uh, registry to school people uh, already have cancers and get the invitation list and do the screening and after screening, we follow up the outcome again by registry. So this again emphasizes why I'm so interested in joining the, the cancer registry and cancer control prevention for April. Because I always told people, you know, no, no registry, no screening, because you cannot uh, uh, get the precise information without them. And, uh, or otherwise, you waste all the resources. And this is a very uh, 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 typical example. And I also, we also story, uh, have stored the C-Long samples, which I will uh, 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 suggest you later on for how to use that. And they, they give very good uh, management for storage, the bio sample for the future use. Uh, and uh, because of the uh, family data collected, so we recently, uh, we built up the population-based problem-oriented pedigree information system. And this is a very useful information system for genetic study, for uh, genetic linkage study, for any family uh, uh, aggregation studies for epidemiologists. And you see, this is a data set. You see, you see the population base update the data every year and uh, do the screening uh, to build up the family structure and uh, by linking with uh, cancer registry, mortality registry, and other possible uh, registry data to 
speed up the information system. And so then you can really build up a system called the Proven Oriented Transgeneration Algorithm. You see, they, this is a, some uh, example of showing the, if you identify this, you can identify spouse and offspring in spouse, you know, parents. So it's very easy to uh, get this. And I show you examples which we just uh, recently found. The beta quick twins of the fa fa of, uh, of, of fathers before the birth, they will have a very strong influence on the metabolic syndrome of, of spring. And I show you very uh, 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 brief examples. And we already pay attention to this program uh, uh, <coughs> long time ago. But the recently, because we got the data of the screening uh, for cancer and chronic disease. So from the beginning, we demonstrate uh, those who had a habit of better quit chewing, they have a 30 to 60% risk of diabetes. And not only for that, they have a high risk for the metabolic syndromes. But this is for individual only. And we are, because we have, a, we have a, a family data, so we try to use a parent-child the information as you have uh, uh, heard about. So we try to build up the parent-child, the, the, the data, you know, uh, to, to identify when, when father you know, have a ch better quit chewing, how they influence the child. And I use the community uh, data. Uh, from the beginning, I use about uh, 20,000 and uh, <coughs> the 10,300 uh, ch the, the family uh, uh, unit. And this is a, a, a structure to show if a if parent, if, if a father have a, have a, a, a better quit chewing, uh, yes and no, and we can divide it even before child, before birth and after birth, because we are interested in the before birth. So this is a result to show before birth, you know, before birth, if your father have a beta quit chewing, you will, your child get the two times of the metabol metabolic syndrome compared with father uh, without exposure to beta quit chewing. And not only for that, you see, the, long, the longer the durations, the, the, early, the, the early age is exposed to the, to the, to the, to the, to the beta quit chewing. The early, early age or the longer durations, you have a higher risk uh, of, uh, of uh, metabolic syndromes and showing the dose, very good dose response in terms of age of force exposure and duration of force exposures. And this is not only for, uh, for beta quit chewing, but also for smoking. Uh, and very interesting for this, and this is just accepted by circulation right now, they will get published very soon. And, uh, this is one of the things, you know, to demonstrate the beta quit chewing uh, uh, through the transgeneration uh, effect and very useful for education. So this is summarize the, the study uh, uh, to show how we use the population-based problem oriented pedigree information uh, to provide a very strong uh, genetic uh, related the, uh, study. Uh, uh, showing uh, the uh, detrimental effect of better quit chewing and also smoking. And of course, as I in mentioned before, uh, I, I already collect a biobank. And uh, this biobank, right now we have a two, we have a six, <coughs> about a six to <coughs> six to a thousand hundreds uh, uh, subjects and about a twen uh, two million, you know, the bio samples has been, uh, have been stored and by standard procedures. And this is a very useful in the future for nested case control study for identifying a new marker uh, uh, during the follow-up. And not only for that, I can show you one in the future tailor screening we just published uh, uh, in the BMJ uh, to show you uh, if you want to integrate block one, block two, and SNP 
and breast density and also convention, conventional uh, uh, risk factor and also biomarkers by using the biosamples. Then you can build up you know, the model, the multi-state model to predict the early, the early cancer and, the, and also the clinical uh, oriented cancers. And you see, then you can certify by different uh, the attributes and also markers by different the mean sodium time, the long sodium time, the longer the, the mean sodium time, the slow the progressions, the, you know, and the other side is like this. So you can use this to guideline to provide the, the guideline for clinical uh, surveillance, and this is a prediction a curve for early cancer for lead cancers by different combination of the attribute and also uh, 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 these risk factor mo models. And we used to build up the personalized you know, suggestion for screening by risk stratification from very high risk from to very low risk and using the suggestion for different starting age and also the short inter-screening interval and the longer screening interval. Try to reduce false negative, reduce false positive, and for the high risk group, very high risk group, also suggest a costly uh, screening tool uh, in order to avoid uh, to spend in the low risk group for using this costly. And finally, this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, the chance of being, uh, using this platform uh, to build up uh, international uh, cancer screening network. And now I'm president of this uh, network. And this is the first page. Uh, we have a conference and in Kilong City in Taiwan. And, and, uh, and I think this is uh, uh, the, the full page. Uh, and we invite Macomb here as well. Uh, so that's why we have a high uh, uh, affiliation with the uh, airport. And I think uh, this is 2014 in Taipei, uh, in Academical Seneca. Uh, and uh, we joined our, our our, our, our organization joined with APOC, our brother, you know, to have a, a very good uh, confidence uh, there uh, in, uh, in Taipei. And uh, so I think this is a chance of uh, enterprise. Uh, and my, my final slide always uh, I share with you is uh, community peoples, actually, they are very, very love you to provide service than doing scientific research. And thank you so much. Thank you for the, um, the invitation to come to Dubai. It was very, very impressive. You go to a village and all of these people come from everywhere. They're doing screening for five different types. They're doing diabetes. They're doing, it's a very, very comprehensive approach which allows you to do very uh, comprehensive research. So um, I hope that we can expand this. Um, hopefully a few more of us will be able to go on to the next um, uh, uh, screening conference, which will be in Bali. Uh, we expect it. We expect. Uh, Bali, but Indonesia. Not, not, yet, deci not yeah. yet decide. So, somewhere in any way uh, later on this year. So please, I'm sure there must be some uh, questions from the audience. Yes, from Shahid uh, Pervis. Thank you, Professor Chen. Uh, a very very interesting, very informative talk, uh, particularly, you know, the relationship of uh, beetle, beetle net chewing uh, with the diabetes mellitus, you know. I mean, in our country, di diabetes mellitus, you know, every, every third person, you know, is a pre-diabetic or diabetic, so, you know, uh, and uh, there is so much uh, uh, chewing. Uh, in, in Pakistan, there is another problem with beetle quid, with beetle nut, that uh, uh, the most chewed uh, beetle nut, uh, the cheaper versions, they are more often infested with fungus than not. So that's a confounding factor and many studies have shown, you know, that those cheaper versions which, uh, you know, these people use in various uh, products, uh, they they have a, they are, mostly they contain fungus, you know, the, uh, f they are fungally infested. Uh, 
I mean, uh, I wonder the, uh, the screening program, you know, I mean, you mentioned briefly uh, the dentist doing some oral examination. So if you can further elaborate that uh, what they look for, what kind of white patches uh, they recommend for biopsy and uh, how effective is that or, you know, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Hey, yeah, this is a, this is a very good question, but uh, we have a population-based uh, oral cancer screening uh, in Taiwan as well. Amy, uh, we are, uh, we are introduced later on, but uh, for, all, for all oral cancers, all of them were sent to the medical center to do the biopsies to, to make a confirmation. But for leukoplakia, like you showed the slide, I mean, it's a long run, half of them can be sent to the biopsies. It's very difficult uh, in Taiwan as well. Uh, so uh, we try to develop the good uh, measures to solve uh, how can we reduce the amount of the positive case or not refer to the uh, uh, oral pre-malignancy like leukoplakia. So, so I, think, I think this is a big challenge uh, for using, uh, for confirmation of the, uh, the, the pre-cancer pre region of the oral uh, the, the cancers. So I, 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 I think, I think we, uh, uh, in the future, that we, uh, we, 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 will, we will find a way of, uh, of, of solving this question. But not right now, you know, in biopsy is very difficult for confirmation for up here. Very good. Dr. David Roda. Tony, I think uh, it's very impressive the research you're doing. It really is. And uh, it says to me t also the opportunities that service delivery programs can offer if they allow research to be integrated into their work so that we can use them not only to serve the people but to collect knowledge that will serve the people That's as right. well. But I, I have an, a specific question. Um, in Australia, of uh, the National Health and Medical Research Council funds research. Most of that research goes to bioscience and less goes to population health research. Six percent goes to research into the health system, only 6%. And yet the country is wondering how can we cope with the demands for service, with the funding required. And so um, I'm just wondering if there is also a health service arm, research arm to what you're doing, and what the data availability is to do that as effectively as you would like in Taiwan. Yeah. Uh... Actually, uh, this is one of the difficulty. I uh, already, I have already uh, been faced with uh, community-based screening uh, 20 years ago. I, uh, when I doing the screening, people uh, talking about science, people just laughing, and uh, uh, they uh, they don't believe that, and uh, uh, I feel very frustrated. So, so, so I, you know, at that time, I think I have to give up. But, but actually. On the other hand, right now, I mean, people, I, people support me to do the screening, not the legislators, you know, support me. So that's why our community-based uh, integrated screening can sustain. Why? Because screening is not only for, uh, for, for screening disease, it's, it's for education people. Yeah. So your local, com you know, your local government is very closely involved so, yeah. in this community enterprise. So you can, you can close to the people. This is my answer. You know. So now our people, uh, not only for the whole island, but uh, for every community I get involved. They support me to do research because I already serve them. I provide health service. I take care of everything. They have a disease. I send to hospital. I take care of everything. You know. so, so I think I believe you know, people uh, were in the favor of the of using science to solve the questions. No, okay. Trust. Any f yes, Dr. Nurbeck. Thank you very much for your presentation. Well, if it's uh, ethical, my question is, what is the cost for your research? And what was the dy dynamic costs uh, for screenings over the 25 years that you did the research? If it's possible, um, can you give uh, the screening costs uh, out of uh, country's GDP, for example? This is one of the reasons 
for cost reason, I do the multiple screenings. Because if you do the single disease screening in our countries, you, every time you spend one time, you know, cost. And not only for that, I cost in, in these community-based screenings, I, use, I don't use the local uh, the government money if the program belongs to the nationwide screening program. So I, I, I can uh, reallocate the resources uh, to uh, equally uh, deliver to the people. So, so that's why I, I don't, it's not maybe a, a good example in Western countries, but in our uh, countries, you know, it's people just love it, you know, it's a package, so they can select any of them and they can uh, send money, actually. I, I have a cost-effect analysis, I don't have time to show. Yeah, but uh, so what the, the participation rates are really high because people want to go along, they take part in this community enterprise, they get their blood pressure taken, all of these sort of things they feel as if they're getting really good service. And in fact, uh, you're now uh, introducing something similar in Thailand and the response is also very, very good. So how, how, um, how this can be introduced to all societies, I don't know. But certainly in your case, it's very, very successful and, and should be emulated. We should try to do the, the same sort of thing everywhere. Yeah? Anybody else? No? Okay, well, once again, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Dr. Chen. Um, and we will thereby close the session. We hope you will, thank you very much for your attendance and your participation, and we hope that you'll all be back here after lunch um, to hear some more about um, cancer registration, cancer screening, and other enterprises here in, um, in, in Asia. Thanks again. Thank you.